Hi, chemistry students. Today, we're going to be performing the epoxidation of chalcones experiment. To do this, we're going to be using our chalcone that we created in our synthesis of substituted chalcones experiment. So this is a follow-up experiment on that. Um, we'll be using hydrogen peroxide and aqueous sodium hydroxide to prepare our epoxide. So let's get started. Okay, so once again, this is our starting chalcone for this experiment. We synthesized this substituted chalcone in the previous experiment. So we'll be adding 0 0.5 millimoles of that chalcone. And I've gone ahead and weighed out about 0 0.5 millimoles. So we'll be taking our 0 0.5 millimoles of our gel cone, and we'll be adding that to a 50 mil round bottom flask. Point 0.5 millimoles of our substituted chalcone. We're next going to add three and a half milliliters of methanol. And a stir bar. And we're going to stir and heat to try and get our chalcone to dissolve in the methanol. We're going to let this dissolve for a few minutes. Okay, so we've had our chalcone stirring in the methanol with gentle heating for a little while. And I don't know if you can see, but it's having some difficulty going into solution. So we're going to help it go into solution by adding dimethyl sulfoxide, or DMSO for short. We're going to add this a half milliliter at a time with continued stirring and heating until the chalcone goes into solution. Now we're adding DMSO because DMSO helps improve the solubility of highly polar chalcones. So again, we'll add a half milliliter at a time. Just until we get the chalcone to go into solution. Our chalcone is still not quite in solution, so we're going to add another half milliliter of DMSO. We're going to add a third half milliliter of DMSO. Okay, so it took a total of two milliliters of DMSO but we were able to get our chalcone into solution. You can see a 
chalcone has dissolved in the mixture of methanol and DMSO. And so now we're going to go ahead and let this cool to room temperature. Okay, so our chalcone in solution has cooled to room temperature. We're now going to add 250 microliters or 0.25 milliliters of two molar sodium hydroxide. And then we're going to add 65 microliters of 30% hydrogen peroxide. And we're going to stir our mixture in an ice bath for one hour. So we're going to let this stir for an hour. And letting it stir for an hour in an ice bath should give us a reasonable yield of epoxides. Okay, so we've had our reaction mixture mixing for about an hour now on ice. So we're going to take it off the ice. We're going to add five milliliters of ice cold water. I have a beaker with the ice water in the ice bucket. And you should see we're getting a precipitate to form as we add the water. Next, going to add 10 milliliters of diethyl ether in order to dissolve our precipitate. So this is diethyl ether. Okay, and then we're going to swirl and remove our flask from the clamp. And we're going to give it a swirl to dissolve our epoxide in the diethyl ether. You can see it's starting to dissolve. What we want to achieve is two clear layers without any solid in there. And we can see we're starting to get that. Okay, so at this point we've dissolved our epoxide in the diethyl ether. 
I think you can see there's two layers there. Okay, so we're going to continue. We're going to be extracting our epoxide in the diethyl ether using a separatory funnel. There's a funnel in your separatory funnel. We're going to use a glass stir rod to help pour our reaction mixture into the separatory funnel. Okay. I'm going to cap our separatory funnel. Give it a nice shake. Make sure we're venting. Okay, at this point, we're going to allow our layers to re-separate. Our organic layer and our aqueous layer. Our layers are separated. We're going to remove the bottom aqueous layer into this beaker down here. Okay, and we're going to transfer our organic diethyl ether layer into an Erlenmeyer glass. Then we're going to add our aqueous layer back into the separatory funnel. We're going to do, we're going to re extract with a second 10 mil portion of diethyl ether. Funnel. Again, mix, venting.
Okay, now we'll allow our layers to separate again. Our layers are separated. We're again going to drain the aqueous layer out. Transfer our organic ether layer to the Erlenmeyer. Okay, so we have our ether extracts. Combined in this Erlenmeyer flask. We're now going to dry our ether ex extracts with magnesium sulfate and hydrous. I already have some out right here. So we're going to add our RM hydrous magnesium sulfate. We're going to cork or stopper our flask. We're going to allow that to dry for about five or 10 minutes. Okay, for the next part of the experiment, we're going to filter our diethyl ether extracts, but we're going to filter it into a pre weighed 50 mil round bottom flask. And so Here's our 50 mil round bottom flask. And the weight of that flask. And we're next going to gravity filter our diethyl ether extracts that have been dried with magnesium sulfate and hydrous into our pre-weighed 50 mil round bottom flask. So it's gravity filtration, so it's gonna take a little bit of time for it to filter. Okay, so we've gravity filtered all of our diethyl diethyl ether extract layers into our pre-weighed 50 mil round bottom flask. So we're going to remove this from the clamp. We're now going to get a water bath set up to evaporate the diethyl ether so that we're left with our solid epoxide product. Okay, so we have our 50 mil round bottom flask with our diethyl ether extracts um, that have been filtered inside a warm water bath and we're directing a stream of air to help drive off that diethyl ether. And we'll let this go until we're left with our solid epoxide. Okay, so we finished uh, driving off the diethyl ether. So our epoxide actually came out to be a semi-solid oil, which is often the case. I don't know if you can see that. So we're not going to be able to uh, filter this with a Hirsch funnel or a Buchner funnel. So we're going to go ahead and weigh it to be able to calculate our percent yield for our final product. Okay, so the mass of our final product plus the pre-weighed round bottom flask.
And again, we were unable to vacuum filter because we got an oily semi-solid epoxide final product. Okay, and this is an IR of our final product, our final epoxide. Okay, and that concludes our epoxidation of Chalcone's experiment.